In this talk, I will discuss the Clarion cognitive architecture, emphasizing some of its distinguishing characteristics. I will start by saying a few words about cognitive architecture in general. Then I will discuss specifically the Clarion cognitive architecture. I will emphasize one particular aspect of this cognitive architecture, that is the interaction between implicit and explicit processes. I will also describe the motivation metacognition cognition interaction, which is also characteristic of this cognitive architecture. I will end with some concluding remarks. To me, a cognitive architecture is a broadly scoped domain generic computational psychological model capturing the essential structures, mechanisms, and processes of the mind. It provides a general framework of the mind specifying its essential structures, within which it also specifies essential psychological mechanisms and processes. So it facilitates more detailed exploration of the mind, exploring various components and functionality of the mind. It represents psychological theories in a computational form, which might otherwise be difficult to capture. Some may argue that the complexity of the mind cannot be captured otherwise. Let's look into the Clarion cognitive architecture specifically. Clarion is an integrative, comprehensive cognitive architecture. It consists of a number of subsystems for different major psychological processes. A quick survey of the psychology and cognitive science literature shows that a comprehensive model must at a minimum, include the following psychological processes. Procedural processes for dealing with uh, actions and skills. Declarative processes for general knowledge and for reasoning. Metacognitive processes for monitoring and regulating other cognitive processes. And motivational processes provides impetus for action and cognition. So correspondingly, Clarion includes the following subsystems. The action center subsystem for dealing with uh, procedural processes. The non-action center subsystem for dealing with declarative processes. The motivational subsystem for motivational processes. And the metacognitive subsystem for metacognitive processes. Together, they address action, skill, learning, memory, concept, reasoning, motivation, metacognition, personality, emotion, and so on. More importantly, they address the combination and interaction of these things. Within each subsystem, there are two levels, that is, two sets of modules with different representations interacting with each other. One set of modules, the top level, encodes explicit knowledge and carries out explicit processes. Another set of modules, the bottom level, encodes implicit knowledge and carries out implicit processes. I will return to this important distinction later. Essentially, this is a due process theory of the mind which has been argued by a number of researchers and has become popular in recent years. So here's a diagram of the four major subsystems. These subsystems interact with each other on a continuous basis. Within each subsystem, there are explicit processes and implicit processes at the top level and the bottom level, respectively, and they also interact constantly. 
The basic principles or theoretical postulates embodied by Clarion can be summarized as follows. Number one, the coexistence and the separation of procedural and declarative processes. Number two, the coexistence and the separation of explicit and implicit processes within each subsystem. Each piece of knowledge is often redundantly represented in both an explicit and an implicit form. For most tasks, both types of processes may be uh, engaged, and the results of their processing are integrated. Beyond the pure cognitive processes, there are also motivational, metacognitive, and other important processes. The interaction among these different types of processes is very important to understanding the human mind. Let me quickly sketch the computational implementation of Clarion as it exists now. Within the action center subsystem, implicit procedural processes are captured by backpropagation neural networks, for example, uh, convolutional neural networks or recurrent neural networks with uh, reinforcement learning algorithms applicable in many circumstances. Explicit procedural processes are captured by symbolic action rules. On the other hand, in the non-action-centered subsystem, implicit declarative processes are captured by associative memory neural networks and explicit declarative processes are captured by symbolic associative rules. Within motivational subsystem, implicit processes deal with uh, drive activations captured by uh, backpropagation networks again. Explicit processes deal with uh, explicit goals Within the metacognitive subsystem, there are likewise these two different types of uh, processes with uh, neural networks and with uh, symbolic rules. So now let me return to the distinction between implicit and explicit processes. Explicit, pro explicit knowledge on the one hand, is conscious or potentially conscious, in other words, consciously accessible. On the other hand, implicit knowledge is not consciously accessible. The distinction between implicit and explicit knowledge is an operationalized notion grounded in psychological experiments to avoid theoretical baggage associated with some loaded terms such as consciousness. Implicit knowledge is often associated with the following phenomena observed in psychological experiments. For example, subjects were unable to verbally report knowledge they acquired they were often aware, unaware that knowledge, uh, that learning occurred, uh, but they were capable of exhibiting knowledge when presented with uh, certain tasks. Experimentally, in person knowledge may be detected through paradigms such as artificial grammar learning, sequence learning, dynamic control, and other tasks. Very importantly, implicit and explicit knowledge do interact. Implicit processes affect explicit processes and vice versa. Within Clarion, implicit knowledge might be best captured by distributed connectionist representations while Explicit knowledge might be best captured by symbolic or localist representations. 
This duality of representation has been extensively argued before, for example, in these papers cited. In particular, the computational characteristics of these two types of representation correspond well with、uh, the phenomenological characteristics of these two types of processes. For example, in terms of、uh, accessibility or ease of access. And together, they also provide meanings or semantics to symbolic representations, grounding symbolic representations in、uh, in in lower level representations, features, micro features. And together, they、uh, capture and explain many psychological phenomena. For example, in terms of、uh, effects of、uh, the implicit explicit interaction. From the psychological literature, we know that the interaction may lead to synergy. For example, in terms of speeding up skill learning, improving performance, facilitating transfer of learned skills, enabling everyday informal reasoning, supporting creative problem solving, and so on. Clarion can capture and explain such psychological phenomena. And actual empirical data in a number of domain, as、uh, described in this、uh, publication listed here. Within Clarion, to capture the interaction between the two types of processes, they are bottom-up activation flow and a top-down activation flow. In Clarion, each concept is represented. In both the top level and the bottom level, in the top level, it's represented by a localist node, and in the bottom level, a concept is represented by activation pattern over a number, a large number of、uh, nodes. And if some of these feature nodes or micro feature nodes are activated, then the corresponding concept node at the top level will also be activated. To a certain extent, proportional to the number of、uh, activated features. On the other hand, if the localist representation at the top level is activated, then the corresponding bottom level features or micro features will also be activated. Together, they can account for many、uh, common sense reasoning patterns. In Clarion, they are also Bottom-up learning and top-down learning, another way of interaction. In bottom-up learning, implicit learning occurs first, and explicit learning happens on that basis. For example, through online knowledge extraction from neural network. In top-down learning, explicit learning happens first, and implicit learning happens on that basis. For example, through reinforcement learning, guided by the actions selected by explicit rules, even though the、uh, explicit rules select actions to be carried out, but the reinforcement learning at the bottom level can observe the consequences and learn on that basis. Bottom-up learning is actually very important. Um, so the RER algorithm captures bottom-up learning in the ACS.、Uh, the basic idea is that if an action decided by the bottom level is successful, then、uh, one extracts a rule. Then, in interactions with the world later, one refines the extracted rule. If the outcome is successful, the rule may be generalized. If the outcome is not successful, then the condition of the rule may be revised, specialized. And these operations are guided by some statistical measure, as described here. I won't get into the detail. Now, beyond the implicit-explicit interaction, let's also look into the motivation-metacognition-cognition interaction. First of all, motives. Provide the necessary impetus for action and cognition. Cognition 
is there mostly to serve those motives, basic needs or essential motives, especially. In addition, metacognition is necessary to monitor and regulate one's motives and the cognition and action in fulfilling those motives. These processes are inextricably linked. Within the motivational subsystem of Clarion, there are primary drives for capturing essential motives, which are mostly evolutionarily acquired, in other words, hardwired to begin with. Low-level primary drives are mostly physiological, including uh, food, water, and so on. On the other hand, high-level primary drives are more socially oriented, including affiliation and belongingness, dominance and power, recognition and achievement, autonomy, and so on. And drive activation or drive strengths can be calculated based on both the external factor and the internal factor. External factor is the relevance of the current situation to a particular drive. And the internal, fact, uh, the internal factor is the internal inclination towards activating a particular drive, marked as deficit and a stimulus in the equation. On the basis of uh, drive strengths, the goal strengths can also be calculated. A goal strength is calculated as a weighted sum of drive strengths, where the weight is the relevance of a particular drive to a particular goal. Once you calculated all the drive strengths, then you can select a goal to be pursued. And that selection can be stochastic on the basis of the goal strengths. Or it can be deterministic based on the, the goal with the highest Goal strengths. And uh, there are also a few other metacognitive functions that can be carried out. Then there is the action selection within the action center subsystem. Action selection will be carried out in accordance with the goal chosen. And uh, action rules may be selected based on utility and the utilities may be calculated on the base of goals and drives. At the bottom level, reinforcement learning can also happen on the basis of goals and drives. On the basis of uh, this motivation, metacognition, cognition interaction, Clarion can capture and explain many psychological phenomena beyond just pure cognition. For example, it can account for moral judgment, human moral judgment, human personality types and dimensions, human emotions, roles of motivation in social processes, motivation performance relationship, and so on. So in conclusion, Clarion is a hybrid connectionist symbolic cognitive architecture. It is meant to be comprehensive and integrative. It includes a comprehensive framework and a variety of essential mechanisms and processes. In particular, it emphasizes the implicit explicit interaction, the motivation, metacognition, cognition interaction as well as a number of other important desiderata, which are not covered here. It accounts for and explains a wide variety of psychological phenomena and actual empirical data. It is conceivable that it can be applied to robotics in a number of different ways, although I'm not working on that myself. <laughs>